In this video, I'm gonna be going over my four step strategy on how I approach technical interview problems. And in my opinion, this has been the most effective strategy for me. So stay tuned because we got a good one for you. Coming up. Huge shout out to the sponsor of the video, JetBrains Academy. Technical interviews can be super stressful. However, with practice and the right tools, you put yourself in a good position to succeed. There's even an article about how a developer solely used JetBrains Academy to learn Python and prepare for interviews and landed a job as a software tester at Nokia. The thing I love about this product is that it takes all the scattered knowledge across the internet and consolidates it into one place. You just pick a track. You can pick Python, Java, Kotlin, and more. The knowledge map shows you all the topics in that track and the connections between them. JetBrains Academy is a project-based learning platform, and you can pick the difficulty of the project depending on your proficiency level, as well as a personalized study plan, which gives you things like question of the day and topics to review based on what you've learned and need to learn. There's also seamless IDE integration, so you can use the powerful features of JetBrains IDEs. Finally, you can upload your finished projects to GitHub which you can add to your resume to showcase the various projects you've created. So use this link right here to get your first month completely free and I'll also leave a link down in the description. All right, before we start, we need a game plan. Most people think that coding takes up most of the time in a data structures type question, but it's often not the case. So here are the four steps that I use. One is to understand the problem. A lot of times the interviewer will make the question vague on purpose, so you can't even answer it without asking questions. Step two is diagramming out the problem. This is where you actually, without coding, you just figure out the steps needed to solve the problem. Step three is writing out those steps, basically the algorithm. And step four is just translating those steps into code. All right, so let's use an example problem for this demo. This problem is called Twosum. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. It's kind of a classic, but basically you're given an array of numbers and a target number, and you need to figure out whether or not two numbers exist in the array that add up to the target number. All right, so we have a couple of examples here. On the top, we have an array of four elements with a target of 10. If we look here, we would see that two and eight would be our two elements that add up to 10. So this would return true. The second problem here, uh, we can't just use 12 because we need to use two numbers that add up. So if we wanted to use 12, we would have to find a zero somewhere. However, we do see that six as well as six add up to 12, so this would return true as well. All right, so let's talk about the first step, which is really understanding the problem because there's no point in trying to solve it if you don't fully understand it. Now, obviously we don't have an interviewer to ask, so we're just gonna have to make some assumptions, but a few questions that you could ask are something like, um, will there be negative numbers? Will everything be an integer or could we have floating point numbers as well? Is the list sorted? How many elements can there be? Can there be zero elements? Can there be a million elements? Some of these questions might not even matter when you're solving the problem, but it's still good that you're thinking about them. And you'll probably think of more questions as you go on, but that's totally fine. The next step is to diagram out the solution. Now, uh, this part will probably take the most amount of time, probably like 40 to 50% of the interview. All right, so let's take this first example here and kind of see how we can figure this out. So initially what we could do is we could just test every combination here and check if it adds up to 10. So initially what we could do is have something like a double for loop where we have one pointer pointing at the two and another loop that loops through the rest of the elements. So initially we would check two and seven, that equals nine, so that's not true. We would check two and 15, again, that's not true. Here we see that we actually get to two and eight, that equals 10, then we would return it true. So we found the solution pretty quickly, but we would potentially be having to go through every combination, which would give us a time complexity of big O of N squared. We're not using any extra memory, so this is gonna be a space complexity of a constant. Now I did mention that this is like a brute force solution, so it's pretty slow. However, I still think, even if you initially think of something better, it's still good to start out with a brute force approach because it's usually gonna be the easiest solution. And oftentimes that's kind of what companies are looking for. Like a lot of companies, they wanna push out their product as soon as possible. And a lot of times engineers try to over engineer certain things. But oftentimes it's important just to like get a solution out there and then you can iterate and improve on it later on. So this is a good thing to mention to your interviewer. 
you know, mention the brute force approach and then ask them, is this, is this acceptable or do you want me to optimize? And this is another reason why it's better to diagram your problem first than to just jump into the code. Because maybe your interviewer wasn't really looking for a solution like this, then you just wasted a bunch of time coding it up. So we'll assume that the interviewer wants something a little bit more optimized. So another strategy we can do is we can say, okay, we're gonna start at the two, we're still gonna loop through the, through the array. When we get to a two, we know that we need to have an eight somewhere in here in order to get to our target of 10. So we can use additional memory to keep track of what we've already seen. So what we could do here is we could use a set and say, okay, we have a two here, we know that we need to see an eight at some point. So what we do is we could just save that here in this set. Then we move to the next element, we get to a seven, we say, okay, we know we need a three to get to a 10. Is there a three anywhere in this set? No, there's not, but there might be later on. So we wanna just be able to save that. Then we go to the next element, we're at a 15, we know we'll have, we would have had to seen a negative five at some point. Have we seen a neg negative five? We check our set, no we haven't. So we go ahead and add that to our set. We move our pointer to eight. We say, okay, in our set, are we looking for an eight? Well, yes we are, because we have one right here. That means that we have a pair that equals our target of 10, and then we would return true. If we had gotten to the end of the array without finding anything, we know that there is no pair that adds up to 10, and we would return a false. The reason we're using a set instead of a list is every time we would want to have checked this list here, we would have to iterate through every number and check to find our target number. However, since we are using a set, we're able to index directly into it, and that saves us the time of iterating through the list. So what's the time and space complexity here? Well, we are only going through our list one time, so that's going to be big O of n. And since indexing into the list is constant time, that doesn't affect our time complexity. However, we do have to account that we are using this set here in memory, so our space complexity will be O of n, because of the size of the set could be the size of our initial list. All right, so now that we have a diagrammed out solution, we wanna write down the steps. And this is such an important step because if you just jump into the code at this point, your interviewer might not really know what you're doing. And that's the last thing you wanna do is to lose your interviewer because you're probably gonna get docked for that. But showing the steps, and, and this could just be in clear English, ensures that you and their interviewer are on the same page. All right, so what are the steps that we need here? We wanna loop through every number in our array. If our set contains that number, we return true. Otherwise, we add the complement to our set, and the complement is just gonna be the target minus the number. If we reach the end of our array, we know that we haven't found any two numbers that add up to our target, and we return false. All right, so we're almost there. The last step is just to take those steps that we wrote and just convert it to code. So I'm gonna be doing this in Java, but it should not look too different in other languages. So here we have a function that returns a Boolean. We're gonna call it toSum. We have our input, which is an array of numbers, and then we have our target, which is an integer. So the first thing we wanna do is create our set. Next, we wanna loop through every number in our array. Now, if our set contains that number, we return true. If it doesn't, then we wanna add the complement to our set. Finally, if we've broken out of our for loop and we haven't found anything, we return false. All right, so at this point, we have a working solution in code. Now at this point, it's up to the interviewer and what direction they wanna go, but often they'll talk about testing. What kind of input can we put in that could potentially break this algorithm? So you're gonna to wanna to be thinking of things like, okay, what if it, does it work with an empty list or a list of one element? Is this gonna work with negative numbers? Is it gonna work with a list of duplicate numbers? Let's try it with a list that returns false, a list that returns true. Just any type of like edge cases that you can think of. All right, so there you have it, my four step strategy to ace your next technical interview. And as you can see, the coding aspect of it was really just a small portion. Once we diagrammed out our solution, wrote down the steps that we needed, it was really just a matter of translating those steps into code. So hopefully you guys learned a lot from the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you, su you subscribe. If you wanna talk more about this, feel free to join the Keep On Coding Discord server where you can connect with other developers. It's totally free, link to that down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on coding. So stay tuned because we got a good one for you.